six here and I'm back with my blu-ray update and yes this is officially the biggest blu-ray update I have ever done uh, by far I usually show like two to four maybe five a month uh, this is what I've picked up in the last month and it's kind of fucking ridiculous uh, I gotta say um, that wasn't you know my DVD update wasn't the biggest one in the world but that I've that I've ever done, but uh, yeah, this one kind of big. I think the ones on top I haven't watched yet. But uh, first up, I was gonna watch this last night, but I ended up popping in Dead Hooker with the Trunk. Uh, first up is Schizo. Or Schizo. This is a uh, Pete Walker film. This is part of the Redemption line. I'm trying to get all these, so you'll see a uh, common fact or common theme in here. There's quite a few. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to get all these redemption films. I just, I love them, man. Uh, love Pete Walker. This is a, I've seen this film before. It's awesome, but I'm looking to check it out on Blu-ray. So, but yes, a schizo. Uh, here's another redemption film, uh, Oasis of the Zombies. Um, this is by, uh, uh, Jess Franco. Uh, I actually really like this film. It's cheesy and bad, but it's pretty fucking fun though, man. Jess Franco is one of the most hit and miss directors with me. You know, he's done every type of genre, you know, exploitation, horror, fucking all types of different type of horror too, and just, just really sleazy shit, but I, I enjoy this film. It looks pretty good on Blu-ray too. Uh, one that I saw on someone's channel a while ago, and I fucking started laughing so hard, and I seen it for really cheap, it was only like 12 bucks, brand new, it was a zombie, so I was figuring, well, I gotta check this shit out, 12 bucks with the slip. Yeah, whatever. This is an upgrade. I upgraded a few things here. Uh, Troll Hunter. I uh, haven't yet to watch it. Just got it the other day. But I really fucking enjoyed this film, Troll Hunter. And I can't wait to see it on Blu-ray. If you know what it, what it looks like on Blu-ray, just let me know. If you have it or seen it on Blu-ray. Uh, but yeah, this is a really very very cool film. Nice slipcover too. It's all boss there. Uh, I've been hearing nothing but good things about this one too, and I just recently watched um, uh, The House of Dead End Street with Jennifer Lawrence. I didn't like the film, but I liked her performance, so I picked up Winter Winter's Bone. I'm hearing lots of people check this out. Uh, so, you know, two for 20, 10 bucks. Why not, right? I'm actually looking forward to watching that one. This is just an upgrade. I, I grabbed that one and I was like, well, I need another one, and I didn't really see much there, and I saw The Descent, and I was like, well, don't have it on blue, so might as well just upgrade. I love this film. Be interested to see on Blu-ray. Uh, even though this film is really, really fucking dark, but uh, this film has a ton of fucking special features too, which is kind of cool. Uh, another Pete Walker film, The Comeback. Another Redemption release. Still haven't gotten want around to watching this one. I got to say the the cover art on the Redemption release compared to the Shriek Show one, not as good. Another Pete, Rock, another Pete Walker film, uh, Die Screaming Marianne. Yeah, uh, this is a good film too. Have yet to check it out on Blu ray, but if you like Pete Walker, man, definitely check out his stuff. I really like this movie too, House of the Whipcord. Uh, this one's still unopened, but another Pete Walker film released by Redemption. So, yeah. Uh, upgraded main to Maniac, <laughs> upgraded to Maniac, upgraded Maniac to Blu-ray, which I heard isn't really an upgrade because I heard the transfer sucks, but, um, I accidentally ordered the single disc. I meant to order the, the double one, but realized after that I'd ordered the single disc, so that's kind of stupid, so I guess I'll have to get the double, which is even more retarded. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I just, it was cheap though. This was only like eight bucks, and like I said, by accident, I thought it was... I don't know what I was doing. There's no way the double disc was going to be eight bucks, but I'm just stupid. Uh, 
upgraded reanimator. Still yet to check this out on blue. I've heard that it's okay, not the greatest transfer, but maybe that's what I heard. But yeah, reanimator, fuck. Gotta get that shit. Uh, another redemption, Zombie Lake. This is a Gene Roland film. Uh, this is some fucking cheesy ass shit, man. Like, I love this film. I remember, the, I gotta say, the transfer on here is pretty good. It makes the film look pretty damn good. The zombies are just so funny looking. Like, it's funny to me how they really didn't use, me and Tat were talking about this a little while ago, how they didn't really use makeup on the necks and stuff. And, like, what they did use on the face is just, it just, the zombies don't look like this. Just put it that way. <laughs> the cover art is a little misleading for the film. Um, but, no, if you've seen this film, you know what I'm talking about. But it's it's so enjoyable. It's cheesy fucking fun, man. Uh, picked up Ticks. Um, i never actually seen Ticks before. I watched this. And i got to say, it was pretty entertaining. Um, it definitely, no pun intended, but this movie did get a little under my skin because I have a fucking thing with little critters. Well, not, I shouldn't say little, the ticks in here are fucking massively deformed and huge. But when they, when they show them like running underneath skin and shit, it just, uh, it just does it to me, man. I don't know what it is. That and pus out of cuts and shit just make me gag. But I don't know, man. I thought the ticks looked pretty good in this. Not too bad. The film's... It's not bad. You know, I really wish that, uh, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Clint Howard was actually in it more. He, his character is actually quite funny in this, but got a pretty young Seth Green in it. Uh, executive produced by Brian Usna, uh, directed by Tony Randall. Um, yeah, overall, it's not bad though. Like, I'm still kind of deciding if, if I liked it more than I did or if I didn't. Oh, it also has Carlton from, uh, the Fresh Prince in it, and his character's funny because he plays like a super badass, <laughs> and it's hard to take serious because, I mean, if you've seen The Fresh Prince and then watching that, it's just funny to me. Um, Tales That Witness Madness. Now, here's a release from, oh yeah, the second one from all, all the films release this. All the films does a great job on their transfers, by the way. This is, it looks really good on Blu-ray. Here's another all of film uh, release, Tales from the Tales That Witness Madness. This is like another early 70s uh, anthology film. Uh, it's got Donald Pleasance in it, Joan Collins, uh, Jack Hawkins is in this. Um, it's just fucking cool, man. The stories are... Uh, you know, and it surprised me too because I'd never seen this one. And uh, there is some blood and there's some boobs in it too. And I was like, well... You know, I was kind of thinking it was going to be the same along the lines of like Asylum and like The House of Drip Blood where there's really no blood and, you know gore and stuff like that, but, uh, this one was very enjoyable, if you like anthology, especially from this time, because the stories are always kind of done a little differently, I enjoyed it though, Donald Pleasance is like in the wraparound story, uh, another redemption film, uh, Hatchet for the Honeymoon by Mario Bava, uh, the transfer on this film's not, it's definitely not a top shelf one, it's not an A+, uh, there is some moments in it that, a little crackly. I think there's a lot of noise in this film, actually. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. I really. This is a good film. Um, I know it's not one of like considered one of Mario Bava's best films, but it's very enjoyable. I think it's actually fucking pretty cool, man. Uh, Renato Palessi, Palessi's Black Magic Rites, uh, released by Redemption. Um, he also did. I think it says on the back here. Uh, Delirium, not the one that Shriek Show released. There was a, 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 a yeah, Delirium, it does sound there, okay. Blue Underground released one with that title by this guy. That movie was a little fucked up. I didn't really like it that much. Now, this one is definitely the worst redemption film I've watched. Now, I really didn't like this at all. I thought it was pretty shitty. Um, it's about, like, these devil worshippers that are trying to bring back their goddess who was, who was sacrificed or who was burned at the stake by killing like these, these girls and feeding them the hearts and shit. And, but you know, the, it, like the storyline seems okay, but it's just executed so poorly. Uh, this movie has a lot of really random scenes that don't make sense. A lot of sex scenes that don't make sense. I mean, I'm not against sex scenes, but they just don't make sense in the film. Uh, there's just a lot of shit happening in here that do doesn't make fucking sense. And it was, it took me three times to get through this. I fell asleep twice. The third time, I it was just 
boring and kind of confusing and but it wasn't it just was it wasn't good man it was not good uh, another redemption film Burke and Hare uh, this is based on the true story the the killers from Scotland they're from yeah Scotland in the 1820s about the you know them basically killing people and selling the bodies to uh, the school uh, this was fucking entertaining man very entertaining it's it's kind of a comedy take on it so it's got some humor in it and it's kind of like dark humor um but this was fucking fun man i really enjoyed this film like i there's lots and lots of interpretations of the story but this one was funny i really enjoyed it oh and there there's one there's a couple parts in this film where the picture actually starts pulsating it's like it kind of goes dark and it like gets really purple and it does that for a couple minutes in the film that is normal i looked it up apparently it's just a flaw that when they were doing the transfer or whatever it's something happened or whatever but it's you know it's kind of distracting for those two minutes but it doesn't really happen again in the film uh hatchet two um i do have hatchet one on the way this one just came really fucking fast uh yeah thought it looked really good on blu-ray actually pretty decent if you like the hatchet series i do recommend them on blu-ray it was i picked this up because it was really cheap it was only like six bucks or something like that so uh chernobyl diaries uh i got asked if i watch this film i showed this in my blu-ray update or my when i did my horror blu-ray uh uh shelf by shelf and i had at the time i hadn't watched it but i did watch it and i gotta say man i'm a little confused on why people aren't liking this film i thought it was actually really good um, I thought it was real, like, the whole third act of this film was creepy as fuck, man. I don't know, man, it was just good. I like the setting of it, you know, like, how desolate it is in Chernobyl, and I thought it was good, man, like, I, honestly, you know, I kept hearing this was found footage, not found footage at all, and, uh, yeah, very good, man, like, I, I picked this up, my buddy shot for, like, three bucks, or five bucks, or whatever, five bucks, I think, and, uh, I actually really enjoyed it. I gotta say, I'm not gonna lie, I thought it was pretty fucking good. Uh, Plague Town, I did show this one too, I hadn't watched it yet. Watched it, released by Dark Sky Films. Um, I gotta say, I didn't really like the film that much at all. It's another one of these films where, you know, this whole town is like, it just has a bunch of fucking deformed kids and stuff like that, and, and what they're trying to do is, they're trying to you know, breed with, like, normal-looking people so they can, you know, get rid of this nastiness that's plaguing their town. Uh, I thought the whole setup to the film was really shitty with, you know, the, you know, the the people on vacation that come across the fucking, this town. I thought that's been done to death, and it was kind of boring. It was executed shitty. Didn't really like the majority of the characters in this film. I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I wasn't feeling that one, man, at all. Uh, the Fly on Blu-ray looks great on Blu-ray. Um, I gotta say, I love this David Cronenberg movie. It's, you know, I was actually thinking about doing a David Cronenberg ranking film. Uh, maybe like my top ten. I don't know where this would rank right now, but I, I love The Fly. <sighs> Just a great movie. Everyone's seen it. Uh, House, and, House at the Dead End. House at the End. House at the End of the Street. Oh my god, I could not get that out. There's just so many fucking movies with the same title, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so I was just mentioning before, I did watch this. I thought this was very cliched. Um, Jennifer Lawrence's performance is really good in it. Uh, you know, for a PG-13 movie, I guess that's what it is. It's not bad, I guess, but this could have been a lot fucking better as, like, you know, an R-rated 18A movie or whatever. Yeah, I... It's not for me. It's not for me. I didn't like it. Uh, probably the find of the month for me. So I'm online trying to find this movie, and I the prices are just retarded, because I know it's out of print. And I'm like, whatever. I'm like, if I ever come across it, I'll pick it up for, you know. I'm in my local HMV, and I come across, obviously, a brand new copy of Psycho out of print for 18 bucks on Blu-ray. And I'm like, well... I, it's a fucking no-brainer because I was just searching online like the like every day the previous week and pretty much every copy I could find was like 35 40 45 bucks uh, Yeah, definitely pop this in watch it looks fantastic on blu-ray I mean the black and white just looks it just sticks out so well. It's great 
classic film, and then I actually went on a fucking psychoathon myself, and I watched part two, three, and four right after I watched this. Man, I love this series, man. One of the best fucking series. All three sequels are very enjoyable, even the fourth one being a TV film. Love it. I just, I love the second film, man. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, so Psycho, that was a good find. Uh, Zombie, Blue Underground release, a zombie. Uh, this one, I, I think I might eventually get the double disc with too. This one was just really cheap. It was only like seven or eight bucks too, so I was like being cheap and I picked this one up. Uh, oh wow, this looked really good on Blu-ray. I was really surprised because um, the Blue Underground Blu-ray releases are hit and miss. I know their DVDs are really, they all look pretty damn good. But, you know, for Blu-ray transfers, they're not known as the best. I've heard of some being really good. I think Vigilante being... I think someone said that one's really good. So I wasn't... I didn't really know what to expect, but it does look actually really fucking good, man. It's really cleaned up and, and looks great and sounds really good, which is a plus for me because I love the score in this film. But, yeah, Zombie. Uh, another upgrade, Trick or Treat. Uh, this looks really, really good on Blu-ray, too. One of my favorite anthologies of all time. It might even be my favorite one now. I just, at the present moment, it definitely is because I've been watching this one a lot more than, than Creepshow. Um, but, yeah, I really love this film. It's fucking awesome, man. It's awesome. It looks great on Blu-ray. And then a couple scream. Actually, I'll show this one here. Uh, VHS, I did show this one before. Watched it. Really enjoyed this film. I gotta say, man, it was really good. Um, and, like, I'm part of the majority, but the Ty West story in here was actually pretty shitty. I just didn't understand why she would go through all that trouble to kill her husband. I just... I, I didn't understand the story one bit. But, no, this was good, man. It's got re it's got lots of replay value. I was talking with... Uh, uh, actually, a couple people about this one recently, man, and it just seems like... For all the hate that it was getting when it first came out, it seems like more people are seem to be enjoying this one. I was talking with Absolute Sublime One the other day about this film, and pretty much his thoughts on it are exactly what I thought of it, you know. But uh, I'm looking forward to the sequel. I can't wait. We were kind of joking about how, you know, the sequel to VHS, I, I said the sequel to VHS should be called Beta. It'd be kind of funny. They're making a prequel to it. Anyways... Um, couple Screen Factory releases, Terror Vision and the Video Dead, fuck man, Terror Vision looks so good on Blu-ray, so damn good, and it's just an amazingly fun film, if you don't have this two-pack, definitely pick this up, Video Dead looks amazing on Blu-ray too, actually, it's not as good as Terror Vision, but it's very enjoyable, loved it, just cheesy zombie film, but Terror Vision then, the soundtrack, the score, awesome, it's just, it's full of funness, man, it's just very quirky and fun, very colorful, loved it. Uh, next up, Prism. Uh, this was pretty enjoyable. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't blown away by this film. I'd never actually seen this one, but I do enjoy this film. I think it's pretty good. But yeah, you know, it's got the reversible cover art. I love the original art on that. It's just so good. So good. And you're probably thinking, I'm going to be showing The Nest next. Yes, I do have that in order. Here's the thing. I got these about a week after they were shipped. Well, The Nest was out of stock at the time, and it came back in, they shipped it two days later. That was on February 7th. It is now March 6th, and I still don't have my copy. So I contacted them, I was like, you know, I'm like, I've received two or three orders from you guys since that one has been shipped, and nothing. I'm like, don't you think it's kind of lost in the mail or something? And they won't, they won't do anything about it, they won't help me out. I'm like, for fuck's sakes, I buy so much stuff from these guys. And I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, it's one movie. Like, just fucking resend it. Or I'm like, I just want them to resend it. I don't even want them to refund me because they re if they refund me, I'm going to have to fucking pay for the shipping to get all that garbage. Just resend me another copy. So I'm pissed off I don't have the nest right now. I'm fucking pissed. Anyways, last up, Skyfall. Um, yeah, I'm a big Bond fan, so I had to pick up Skyfall. Everyone's saying this is the best Bond film ever made. You know, it's just fucking best villain ever. I'm like, wow, people overhype this shit to death. I really enjoyed this film. It's by not even close to the best Bond film, in my in my opinion. Uh, it is good, though. Um, I thought uh, Javier, whatever his name is, um, I always fucking forget his name. I thought he was pretty good as the villain. Um, 
And, uh, you know, the end of the movie was a little surprising because I, I stayed away from trailers and stuff, so I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen in the end. But, yeah, it is, you know, Daniel Craig films, they've been all good so far, in my opinion. Quantum Sol has been probably the weakest, but I did enjoy this. It's not the best Bond film to me. That's all I'm going to say on that. But, yeah, so that's my Blu-ray updates. All the titles I picked up in the last month, I've picked up a lot. And I actually still have quite a few in the mail right now that just haven't shown up, so... But yeah, anyways, thanks a lot for watching Moose 616. Leave comments down below. Peace out, homies.